Alex Wynn. It is 1 o'clock precisely here in the east, 10 a.m. out west. We're going to get to what's happening right now out there as we have new questions today about the deadly attack in Benghazi, Libya, and whether the Obama administration tried to de emphasize the role terrorists played as the November election approached. Let's go to the White House and NBC's Peter Alexander. And with a good Saturday to you, Peter. This all seems to stem from the newly disclosed emails. So, what does the White House have to say about all this? Yeah, Alex, it is a good question. We're going to tell you a little bit more about those uh, emails right now. The White House, as you know, has long insisted that the intelligence community drafted almost all of these talking points referring to Benghazi. But those emails that you refer to are now suggesting a very different story. And insiders are telling NBC News about what they describe as a knife fight between officials at the State Department and the CIA. <laughs> Exactly eight months after the deadly attack in Benghazi that killed Ambassador Chris Stevens and three others, leaked emails reveal the Obama administration was more involved than initially stated in watering down the now widely discredited talking points. It makes it look like they're trying to hide something whether or not they are. The emails show 12 separate drafts of those talking points. The CIA's first version blaming the incident on protests in Cairo over an anti-Islamic video and noting we do know that Islamic extremists with ties to al-Qaeda participated in the attack. The initial text also made reference to five other attacks against foreign interests in Benghazi. That language raised red flags at the State Department, where then spokesperson Victoria Newland emailed that the mention of prior attacks, quote, could be abused by members of Congress to beat the State Department for not paying attention to agency warnings. So why would we want to feed that either? Concerned. At White House meetings the following day, other officials further diluted the language, eliminating the references to terrorism and previous attacks. That Sunday, U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice followed the talking points on all five talk shows. What happened in Benghazi was, in fact, initially a spontaneous uh, reaction to what had just transpired hours before in Cairo. Once that assessment was discounted, the White House insisted it had only changed one word and on Friday stood by its story. The CIA it, you know, was the agency that made changes to the edits and, I mean, to the talking points and then produced the talking points. A thorny issue for the Obama administration, and analysts say perhaps a larger problem for former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, said to be eyeing a possible presidential bid in 2016. It strikes me that she had a political problem with Benghazi before these emails, which is it happened on her watch. And the White House argues that Republicans and other critics are trying to politicize this issue, Alex. The White House insists that it was national security staff members only involved in those uh, discussions about the talking points, not political advisors to the president. Okay, Peter, I want to thank you very much. You've teed us up perfectly for what happens next year. Thanks. Joining me now, staff writer for The Hill, Elise Vebeck, and MSNBC contributor and political editor for The Grio, Perry Bacon Jr. Elise, I'll begin with you here. As Jay Carney said um, in November, that there was a single adjustment made to the talking points, you know, changing the word consulate to diplomatic facility. Now we're seeing there were, in fact, 12 separate drafts with significant changes, including eliminating references to terrorism, but keeping the point about the Cairo demonstration as the spark that actually set off the attack. So, at least, what does this do to the administration's credibility? Well, Alex, I think there's no question that the White House flubbed the explanation on this a little bit. But I think the real danger is that it keeps the story alive. We're going to see an entire another round of GOP attacks precipitated by these emails. And I think that's dangerous for the White House because they're probably sick of talking about this. Okay, uh, Perry, to you. The big question for many, um, especially looking at 2016, is whether Benghazi is going to affect Hillary Clinton should you decide, she decide to make a run for the presidency. Now, Republican Senator Rand Paul was talking last night in Iowa. Uh, he's also, by the way, being mentioned as a possible 2016 GOP candidate. He spoke at the annual um, Lincoln dinner, and he questioned the initial response to the attacks. Listen to what he said last night. When your people on the ground, military people and State Department people, are asking for more help, they're asking for security, they're pleading for security, and they got nothing. It was inexcusable, it was a dereliction of duty, and it should preclude her from holding higher office. Pretty rousing response there, but of course you understand the audience to whom he was speaking. That said, you know, Hillary Clinton has said that she had nothing to do with this in terms of the writing any of the talking points. Do you think this has the potential to haunt her if she runs for the presidency? 
based on what we know right now, I don't think it does. And two reasons for that. The first is that as far as we know right now, the talking points and the general whatever you think of the scandal here, Hillary Clinton is not directly involved. The State Department was, and I know she was running that, but I think for most Americans, they want to know that Hillary Clinton herself was really involved. The second thing is, Hillary Clinton ultimately is trying to get the votes of Democratic voters for the primary and even for the general election. And it's not clear right now. Most Democrats view Benghazi as a symbol for Republican overreach and Republican hyperpartisanship. They view, on some level, Republicans attacking Hillary Clinton for Benghazi is going to make her seem stronger and more popular among Democrats. So I don't see this as being a big problem for her right now. If we learn that she was more involved in the talking points or something else that would change my sense about this, but mm -hmm. right now, this is not a big barrier. Hillary Clinton is the most popular politician in America by most polls. I don't think there's a lot of evidence, and that's a poll, this poll conducted since Benghazi has been going on. There's no evidence that's really hurt her so far. Well, I think the analogy you're saying there, unless we find out otherwise, right. it's almost like the CEO of a large corporation being held accountable for malfeasance on the part of someone who's on a much lower level and dealing with something you know, I mean, I think there's a certain analogy that can be made there at this point, again, unless other information comes to light. Um, the other big story you want to talk about today, Elise, the IRS.